Hey guys, this video is an extension of the midpoint video, and this video is about finding a missing endpoint when you have a midpoint and one endpoint. We're going to start with a little uh, warm up, a recap of what a midpoint is and how we would locate it. So go ahead and title your notes if you haven't already, and jot down this number line, which I've used a ruler to equally measure out my points. And I labeled point A at 2 and B at 10. So it's pretty easy for us to identify where the midpoint of this segment would be. Um, like we said in the last video, a midpoint is halfway between the two endpoints. It creates two smaller congruent segments. So if I were to take the total distance from 2 to 10, that total distance would be 8. If I cut that into two equal parts, each one would have to be four units. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So my midpoint must be on my number line at unit six to make two equal segments that have a length of four. Okay, pretty easy review. What if I change the question? So go ahead and draw another number line, one through 11. And this time I'd like you to graph the point A at 3 and the point M at 6. This question is different because I'm not asking you to find the midpoint. I gave you the midpoint of segment AB right here at point M. So if this is the midpoint of a segment, where would that segment end? Well, since A is on the left side, I know that B has to be somewhere over here. And in order to find the exact location of that endpoint, I'm going to use the same concept that we did above, um, which is that the midpoint creates two smaller congruent segments. So this is one, two, three units from A to M. So from M to B must also be one, two, three units. Right? So B must be located at 9. So all of the examples we're going to do now are the same concept, but instead of doing them on a number line, we can do this on the coordinate plane, right? So here is example 3. If M is the midpoint of EU, then find the coordinates of U. The coordinates for E and M are given, and we need to figure out where the point U would be located. If you think about this on the coordinate plane, if we wanted to draw a quick little sketch, negative 8, negative 1 would be somewhere over here, and 0, 3 would be somewhere over here, right? So E, M, if I were to follow this, U is going to have to be located somewhere up here. So how are we going to figure out the exact coordinates of that point? Well, you can use the same method we did on the first two examples and think of this like a number line instead of on the coordinate plane, which might be a little bit confusing for some of us. So I'm going to look for patterns, just like I did up here. For my x values, negative 8 to 0, is adding 8. So negative 8 to 0, the pattern is plus 8. Just like we did up here, I'm going to do the exact same thing to find the x value of u. So from 0 to the x coordinate of u, I must have to add 8. And 0 plus 8 is 8. I'm going to do the exact same thing for my y coordinates. Okay? From negative 1 to positive 3, the difference is adding 4. So I'm going to follow that exact same pattern from my midpoint to my other endpoint. So 3 plus 4 gives me 7. So the coordinates of u should be 8 comma 7. And you can check by going back to your sketch, does that make sense? If I were to graph the point 8, 7, it would be in this area. So that makes some sense. 
Um, this sketch is always a good idea because sometimes if you get a point and you misadded or you accidentally subtracted when you were supposed to add, then that could throw you off. You can go back and check to see if your answer makes sense. Okay? Example four is very similar. So I'm going to give you two coordinates. I'm going to give you the midpoint. And I'm going to give you one end point. Go ahead and see if you can draw a little sketch of this situation and figure out if you can take a guess on where you think the coordinates of B should be located. So just based off my little sketch, I guess that B is going to be somewhere down here. So it's going to have a positive X value and a negative Y value. Okay. Now, I drew my points like this just to show you how to do it in this direction. If this is confusing, you can go ahead and set it up the same way we did up here with the end point, the midpoint, and the end point missing on this side. Okay. So from 6 to 10, I'm adding 4. So I want to do the same thing from my midpoint to my end point. That's missing. So 10 plus 4 gives me 14. I'm going to use the same concept. Starting at 7 to negative 7 is subtracting by a value of 14. So I'm going to do the same thing to find my missing y value. Negative 7 minus 14 gives me a y value of negative 21. Again, that makes sense because I guessed b to be somewhere over here. So positive 14, negative 21, it's going to be located somewhere in that area. So my final answer is 14, negative 21. I think this is the fastest way to find a missing endpoint when you know the midpoint and one endpoint. If this way is not clicking with you, I would suggest that you follow some of the other videos. There's a bunch of different methods to do this. I'm just presenting one that I think will work for most people.